Easy home sex. Hello and welcome to Model Lads. Welcome back to this second entry in this painting log for the Plastic Soldier Company's Panzer IVs. Today I'm going to be looking at how I've done the tritone camouflage on these tanks. And I have to say there needs to be a bit of a pause before we start. Uh, this nearly drove me mad and I'm not confident with the airbrush and I'm not confident um, spray painting tritone German camouflage. It's always gone wrong for me in the past and so I've been reticent about doing it now. I think there's a couple of things I spent ages with this one prepping in order to give myself the confidence to have a go and the first thing I would say is you need to get yourself a good reference um, source in this case I've printed out uh, different um, Panzer IV camouflage designs from Battlefront's website principally importing them into Word um, scaling them up so I can look at the camouflage patterns and that gives me something to work to my second piece of advice would be to get your airbrush a trigger limiting device this restricts the amount by which you can pull back the needle and uh, and it affects obviously the quantity of paint that flows through the brush and by having it set at a preferred distance you can concentrate on the amount of air going through and not having to keep worrying about the paint i found that if i just get twirling a little um, dial at the end i could get the paint of flow flow to increase or decrease relative to what i was doing and the time that i was doing it in so that i didn't end up with like crazy amounts of paint on there and then a tiny little bit of paint and then a crazy amount of paint so i found that really really useful Another excellent source, if you haven't already watched it, is MX Precision's airbrush and camouflage patterns presented by Mario Eanes. Two things I took from this uh, DVD. The first was the consistency of the paint required. And there's an excellent little test here where you kind of mix your paint up um, with your thinner and then you let it run down the side of a glass jar and when it resembles the consistency of milk you know you've got it right and secondly one of the things that I hadn't been doing was when I had got the paint in my airbrush down to low psi I was always spray pra or practicing the spray on a kitchen towel or a piece of paper and Mario here has recommended that you spray onto a piece of plastic card because that more closely resembles the surface of the model it will be spraying onto and it can prevent you from getting um, gosh runs spidering all those kind of things you'll see how the paint goes on so with these things in mind with a firm um, design that I had in uh, I wanted to do and the paint mixed to the consistency I started to crack on and straight away <laughs> um, started to get into problems really um, I found that the MIG um, paint set that I'd been using the red brown and the green uh, really dried in the airbrush so although I was working at a low pressure uh, the paint dried um, and started to clog the airbrush and uh, the paint would go on quite dark. It would sometimes splatter. And I was constantly having to wipe the end of the nozzle. I'd taken off the crown so that I could try and get a finer line, uh, but it still kept happening. And this was something that Mario also noted in the video that really Vallejo and a lot of acrylics, pure acrylics, tend to dry very quickly in an airbrush. And he recommended really that the, 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 the best op the best alternative was Tamiya paint. Um, and so I was lucky enough to be near a local modeling shop, quickly popped in, got the relevant Tamiya paints and this, and thinner, and this made my life so much easier. I could spray at a lower pressure um, without changes or discoloration in the paint and get quite fine lines on the design. And whilst the paint wasn't exactly the same as MIG Ammo's paint in terms of its colour, it was significantly lighter, particularly the brown, I found that between the old and the new paints, I had quite a nice variation in my Panzer IVs. And although I wasn't happy with the final result, um, I never am, uh, it became easier to do. I got less stressed and um, I could relax and actually enjoy doing the camouflage painting rather than um, finding it a chore, trying to rush it, making mistakes, going over things. So that's what I did. Uh, uh, got cracked on with Tamiya paints and you can see the results um, that I've got here really at the end of the day. 
So uh, there you go. If there is a holy grail to painting tricolour camouflage, at least for me, it has to be Mario Eanes, an airbrush trigger delimiter and appropriately uh, thinned Tamiya paint. Now that doesn't um, finish this section really because um, you saw one of the nicer tanks. This is one of the worst tanks where I got a bit too enthusiastic in my application of camouflage and or careless. So rather than sort of airbrushing the whole thing um, back to yellow and trying again, what I thought I could do really is to identify the most offensive um, shirtsons, mask off on either side and spray them the base coat of Dunkelgel with a slight bit of highlighting to, to, to um, get me a quick win of a replacement shirt in the field that hadn't been camouflaged. So there you have it, 12 freeform tritone German camouflage Panzer IVs. Next up comes the application of decals, uh, a filter and initial weathering using oils. Thanks a lot. <laughs>